Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is me again, the Pixel Broadside of Pinoy and Victoria. Thank you for my subscribers for faithfully waiting. Um, it may have seemed that the channel kind of went on hiatus because of the lack of content being uploaded. Rest assured, I actually had a few things recorded. The thing is, I never really got time to upload and edit them. So they kind of just sat in the hard drive for the last few months. But now, I decided to upload all of them together as one single long compilation. Now, this is why I am saying this right now as a disclaimer, because you will notice um, a few sections where maybe the volume and maybe the pitch are kind of different um, because these were recorded during different times probably during different times in the year as well now sit back relax i'm just really thankful that you've stuck with me here and let's enjoy the rest of the show oh by the way if you do like the content please like and then subscribe it will help with the growth of the channel so without further ado, let's go on and go through the, the recordings. But I know, make your stable na konti dito ngayon sa bahay. So hopefully maka kano lito ako ng parang para makapang upload ng semi regularly I'm gonna try anyway kasi parang pa nga yari dito sa family and it's still not as stable as I'd want to pero I'll give it my best pero here we are it's been what almost two years since na last ako mag-upload dito ng video. It's been a long while. Uh, suffice to say, ang dami nangyari dito. So, uh, let's see. Dumating yung family ko, which is my wife and my two kids. Tapos, napalipat ko na bahay. Uh, basically, same general area. Pero, it's a different place. Honestly, mas better siya compared sa unang place na pinagagayantahan namin. Hindi siya cheap though, pero it's a home. Which is, honestly, lucky kami na family namin na mayroon kami ka dito. Kasi, honestly, ang mahal dito kahit na nakakayantahan sa Victoria. Aside from that also, nag-graduate na ako sa University of Victoria. So, I am now the proud owner of a diploma in business administration. Nagkaroon din ako ng, you know, change ng jobs. So, dati, nagkanda kuba-kuba ako sa pagkocommute from area namin up to Sydney and back. Honestly, naging antena po na yun, especially na dumating na dito yung asawa ko at yung mga anak. So, had to look for greener pastures despite na nga, although my first employer was you know willing to support any kind of PR application pero yun talaga we really did we need to look for something closer so the kind of kind of work it was an office job stayed there for almost a year you know lot of circumstances na nangyari and I had to leave it so ito ngayon ako um, semi house husband mode nag-aalaga ng bata it's it's all way of fulfilling pero of course siyempre di ba kasi laking opsina ako eh so you know I hope to one day get back into Google things kapag but right now I'm kind of enjoying watching over the kids watching them guiding them and watching them get into trouble ba? Another thing na nangyari, of course, is tumating yung kapatid ko. It's kind of her turn na 
Garal. She's also taking up business administration. Um, hindi sa UIC. Kasi right now, nag-backlog na yung UIC for about two years. So, she is taking up her studies in a different university dito sa British Columbia. Um, it's remote for now. Pero eventually, she's going to have to move to a different part of BC. Kasi it looks like they're planning to go back to face-to-face studies na. So of course, she's going to have to move out. Um, until then, we're supporting her. We're making sure that she gets acclimated to Dito's Canada. And then, we'll see where we can go from there. Honestly, it has been a long two years. It's more than two years at this point since I came here to Canada. It's been eventful. Pero ako, I'm the first to claim na hindi siya naging madali. Na honestly, marami akong decisions na I hope na would have gone differently. Sa nice ko sooner. So, allow me to share some of my experiences dito na para sa inyo mga nababalat na magstay here na matagal. Eh, you know, Let's just say something, so I'll give you some things to think about. Gonna be free flowing to. Wala akong kasing structure right now, and of course, you know, I'm not going to the script tonight. But you know, it's different. It's a different type of video. Alright, so first and foremost, ang um, first thing dapat na naisip ko, na, or pinaghandaan ko in a way before my family came here was yung tirahan namin. Honestly though, ang first na place na rinenta ko dito sa Canada, although adequate siya, adequate siya, I guess, para sa isang sepana, single na almost pang semi-bachelor style na pang buhay. Uh, the moment that the family came here, we quickly found that it wasn't enough for a small family. So, we had to really quickly look for options. Now, you have to imagine, it's really hard to get out of the options here to get out of the house. In the middle of the, one of the worst the housing crises, like in modern memory in Canada, the prices right now, the rent is like, up 20 to 30 percent. So you can imagine that the pakamal kami bigla na ulo para maghanap ng bagong bahay na matitirahan. I have to thank my wife's ingenuity kasi siya yung nakahanap ng bahay actually. And although initially hindi mas sila papayag na lumipat yung isang small family, napakaigsapan na. I will say though na it's not going to be the same for everyone. Super hirap like now na makahanap ng lodgings dito. Um, even if you're alone, never mind na kung meron kang pamilya. Sa so, mga ganito naman bahay na separate yung basement, you'd be lucky na na makakuha kayo ng mga 1,700, 1,800, 1,800 na Pero that's in the middle of Victoria, of course. Kapag if you go further sa so mga Langford, Colwood, yan mga Sandstone, of course, tumumura yung mga rent. On the flip side, mas malay sa Victoria. So, unless na makahanap ka na pagkatabahuan, na malay sa city center, then you're gonna look forward to a very very long commute. Kaya um, if you're coming here to Canada with your family, please please kailam magan nakagan kayo na pagplanuhan niyo na yung or maghanap na kayo ng place na tatanggap ng isang small family because honestly ang hirap. Even the apartments here, yung mga pang studio type pang apartments, parang dalang lang mag-accept ng mga ano, mga 
mga immigrant, well, small family immigrants. Kasi it will either be small or you know it's gonna be expensive. Another thing na I hope na gawin niyo o iwasan niyo yung experience ko, of course, is the fact na kung magkano kayo ng pagtatabuhan is like would be rich sana ng residence niyo. Uh, we have a good public transport system here sa Victoria. Uh, the buses are, you know, semi-regular. Madami din sila. And most of the most of the places na dalalanan ng mga buses ito. However, however, may mga set na times yan. So you are really going to be tied sa schedule ng bus na dumadaan sa area ninyo. So kami, medyo lucky kami, malapit lang yung bus stops dito sa ano namin. It's not always gonna be that way. So of course, kailangan yung planuhan ang time ninyo na isuspend na pag walk towards the bus stop plus yung commute time ninyo plus of course yung actual work ninyo work time ninyo then it's like the trip back um, I would say kung if you're kung ikaw kung you know isang student ka lang na hindi pa, hindi pa susunod yung family mo um Pwede kasi Google na magtabaho ng mga locations na 40 minutes and up ang bus commute. However, especially kung medyo young yung family ninyo, I mean, it's gonna be hard na ang commute ninyo ay more than like 45 minutes. Unless na uh, ang isa sa inyo sa ano, isa sa inyo ay magsa-stay at home, the parent. And honestly though, it, it, right now, hindi, med, hindi practical yun. So, it's a good chance na both parents mag-alternating ng trabaho. So, my advice is one of those parents is probably siguro yung kukuha ng part-time na work. This has to be like within 20 to 30 minutes ang, ang workplace from kung saan kayo nakatira. At least. Kasi, I mean, it, everyone wants to have like a car. Everyone, you know, eventually, you know, yung naman natin, yung target natin, we get a house, we get a car, like our own car, diba? Um, until na maging PR kayo, it's not going to be a reality. So, Lala ko emergency na kailangan mo umuwi ka agad ng bahay. It's, yeah. If you, kung masyado marala yung trabaho, so it's gonna be difficult. So keep that in mind kung kukuha kayo ng bahay. Let's see, what else? Um, ecology. Um, savings. Um, nung mag-isa ko dito, I found na uh, kaya mong survive ng anywhere between like two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars to two three hundred dollars per cutoff, basically. So, ano good kung kung bago magasos sa isang buwan, bisig ko abot ako na seven hundred dollars sa ano sa food budget ko pero asa kung dapat pang maliit. However, however, di ka na isip na tama kung ito dapat yung family ko is ang costs ay I mean kind of expected pero yung reality is nung dumating yung family nung dumating yung kids especially since you know tad less than 5 yung dalawang anak eh so like the costs like the budget like skyrocketed um parang it went from something like hmm was something like 500 600 per per cut off um absolutely never mind pa kung may pang kailangan din ba si na ano na na, na, na kailangan bilhin si groceries so you're looking at something like hmm, oh, nasa 800 plus 
ang conservative na estimate yun. Kung medyo nung kaya, I mean, kung kaya yung magtipin, you can probably bring down the costs, monthly costs ng pagkain. Like, probably to around 600. Pero of course, yung, kasi sa amin is may, may gatas pa, may diaper pa. So, you know, those, those kind of add up like really, really quickly. So, yeah, nakikita nyo bigla yung pang necessity ng ano. Kasi I went from being able to like, support myself sa in earn ko totally na lang talaga kaya ito we had to we had both of us had to like start working na so yeah uh, but there are ways to help alleviate things though kung medyo matagal ka na sa Canada of course there is yung tinawag na um Canada Child Benefit um, basically, program siya ng government of Canada, both provincial and national, na para tumungan yung mga under, what's this, underprivileged, kumbaga, na mga families. Um, and if you've been working sa, basically, sa service industry, like us, for the past year or two, um, you will be parang under a certain... Uh, annual uh, earning limit. So, if you have kids, if you have kids, you can have kids, like more than. I can't really say how many kids you need. The bare minimum na you can stay in the province. Um, I stayed here like about. I would give it like more than a year, I guess. If you are eligible, you can apply to your family. Mo para sa 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 monthly na child benefit program nila. So, if you manage to submit all the requirements and okay naman sa sa you know, sa local government and the provincial government, you're gonna expect like a monthly payout para sa depending on the number of the kids that you have. And... Parang siya nakakatulong yan. Um, sa family namin last year, uh, we received like $1,350 per month para sa kids. And that's a lot. I honestly... You know, um, of course, like... 70% nun napunta sa savings ng mga bata pero otherwise kung, kung ano maiwan dun sa 1,350 nakakatulong dun sa gastos ng bahay it's not gonna pay for everything pero if you both of you are working kung isa sa inyo ay full time isa part time is comfortable kayo you can be comfortable um, of course another thing is um if you were able to file taxes, of course, kung isang tao ka na dito, nang tao na work, then if I can taxes, um, of course, you can expect yung tax refund. A lot of times, substantial naman to, especially if you've been working really, really hard over the course of the year. Um, building pang quarterly, I think it's just called a tax rebate. Now, on top of that, so, ang tax refund is like a one-time thing. Usually, kapag nag-file ka before April, you expect it around June or July. Ang tax rebate is something that's also done by the government to offset the tax na binabayaran nyo dito ng semi-regularly. It's like paid, paid out like every quarter. It's not a big amount. Something is, and ang nag-receive ko is, experience ko is something like 300 to 300 to 400 like every quarter that kind of depends of course sa ano mo sa sa sinabit mo na uh, taxable taxable amount mo for the previous year um, I will say it helps it's not going to be like game changer pero when it you can, you're not going to complain kabong tumating siya um what else oh god um and, um, there are a lot of things that you have to think about, especially when you're a kid here. 
Uh, one thing that I think we lack here in the Pasamabara is like parks. In the Philippines, we take for granted that um, if you want to go to the bata, you have to go to the mall. Dito, this area that we have, like every two, walang niro pa ng gagalaw ng two or three blocks ng pangbaya ng park ng dito na. Bring your kids out. I mean, uh, especially now that medyo umado na yung pandemic, nang nagsistabilize ng konti, there's no excuse for you to not bring your, your kids like, outside and they will enjoy it. Um, of course, kailangan mo lang maghanda din ng stuff, especially like pagkain, inumin. That's, that's kind of expected. Tama na yan. Ang expected na yan. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Um, I'd like to make this clear. Um, bantayan niyo ang effectivity ng mga IDs niyo and work program niyo. Because right now, super hirap ng application process ng permits and IDs. I mean, kasi nag-change reaction yan. Ako, for example, nag-graduate ako dito ng December for my student to the permit. So, I had to, like, right away make sure na like, nag-submit kompleto lahat ng mga requirements ko para makapag-submit ako ng uh, application for a postgraduate work permit. So, I submitted, like, kuha ko yung credentials ko from the school, like, the letter of confirmation that I graduated tapos yung uh, transcript of records ko like early January like exactly the next day I submitted my application and all the requirements pa sa postgraduate work permit ang tanggal ng processing it's like when I first submitted ang processing time nung nalagay sa website nila is something like more than 101 days and then it is the moment it became 141 that is a long time to give you an idea I got the postgraduate work permit form ko, like this this June na, that's like 5 months waiting talagang, and the, what's worse is um, legally the moment na mag-expire ang student permit mo, hindi ka na dapat magtrabaho niyan. Like, there's a date there, there's another state there, actually, once you submit the postgraduate work permit, that says na you're allowed to work up to this point or earlier. So, a point na yun is the expiration of your, your student permit or kung ano yung data na kalagay sa may application form mo. Mahano siya. I mean, it's, it's, it's um, in any other situation, mahal malaking panumit niya. Pero this is not like a regular situation. I mean, super here. I mean, five months is five months. It's a long time. And nangyari, nangyari sa amin is, of course, some of our, uh, some of our ideas nag-expire na lang. And it turns out some of those like credentials are needed by some of the mga local work, mga kumaghanap ka na work, they're gonna look for it. Your work permit, yan, yan. Um, most, of the, uh, most of the companies dito, hindi sila magbibigay ng consideration na your, your, you know, your extension is being in process and even though American are calling regarding the immigration that this person is has submitted the application and we're just, we're, they were just waiting for the result of you know, the extension application they won't take that like as a document as a you can work in fact like Siguro sa mga sampan na lang na the company that you're trying to apply would like look the other way. In that, 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 um, the company will insist on getting like a, a valid work permit. 
Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck like working sa mga service na job. It's gonna be rough kasi ang mahirap, I mean, not to denigrate yung ano, mga natutaba, mga kakababayan natin natutaba sa service industry. It's a lot of work. Super, super, super hip. Tad, alam, tad, tad ka every day. But, you know, kung, if you don't have like a work permit, sila lang talaga magtatanggap sa iyo. Honestly. And even then, like, so, like even the mga housekeeping jobs, housekeeping, so they, they look for that. They look for a valid work permit. So if you're kind of like stuck in between, waiting for the results of your work permit extension application, then bang nga ka don, right? It's gonna be tough. Same with um, same with the you know some of the IDs like the. Your MSP card book, yeah, the driver's license. These have expiration dates. Normally, two years on expiration date. Ito. The moment your either your work permit or in case not any study permit, with the moment those like wear off, tapos wala na yung ano, um, wala na yung mga benefits, which is a big deal, especially sa MSP. The MSP is the medical service plan na binabayaran natin na pinapambay ng provincial government. It, it pays for like hospital, hospital visits and stuff like that. The moment na nag-expire yung card mo, you can't apply for something new until na dumating yung confirmation na may work permit ka na namago. So, I mean, di ba, medyo mahirap yun. Unless na you, you're also paying for like uh, a private na insurance plan. Pero hindi man lahat ng tayo ay mayroon tayong extra mga pera na makapaggawa ng ganun. So, if you get caught na medyo na kailangan mong magpatingin sa hospital and yung, ano mo, yung MSP mo, MSP card mo is paso, then here up. Same goes with yung driver's license natin. I mean, um, I mean, it's a, it's a small thing. It's a small thing, especially if you can drive. But it's also still a valid, a valid ID. And at the same time, there's some there's some jobs here that are required now. You have a actual a valid a non-learners the driver's license. And you won't be able to get it if you don't have a job permit, right? So, I mean... Kita mo yung medyo frustrating na ano. And I mean, I wish na I had the foresight to just, you know, laging maging prepared na ano, na ito pala mangyayari kapag hindi mo nabantayan yung expiration days ng mga IDs mo or ng, ng work permit mo or like in the middle, you're waiting for the result of the extension. So, yeah, please keep that in mind. Ang two years, parang... It passes like in the blink of an eye, but you have to be prepared for it. Na kapag dumating yung situation nyo, you have to like be ready to move. And asikasuin ka dahil yung mapapenis ninyo. Oh, um, another thing that I found here, of course, is yung mga... Mami lang sasabi talaga na makaming jobs dito sa Victoria, which is kind of true. The problem is, unless na service ang job and either hyper specific hyper specific yung ano mo, line of work mo like you're a manager of an IT na service na America actual na present na certification na hey I've been working in IT for like 2 to 3 years ang hirap dito na makakuha ng work na hindi ano na hindi na service I mean you can I mean I've been trying Look, you know, full time work. I mean, everyone wants to look get like full time work. Because especially since the kahatul lang siya sa if you want if you kapag dumating na time na magapply ka na PR. Because of course, you, if you got a full time job or job offer or you know, malaking bagay yon. But the fact is, I mean, I think eighty percent of the time is mang abano ka na either housekeeping ka or sa restaurant business ka either as kitchen staff or uh, front 
sa ano ka, cashier ka, or servers ka, or dishwasher ka, kanyan. Or any other sort ng NOCC na type ng mga work. And... I mean, hindi siya... Again, I, hindi ko din dedicate yung mga nagtatabaho sa natin because I work, nagtrabaho din ako dyan. I work like more than two years of service industry here. Um, however, ideally kasi, you'd like to find something na nag-aano na nagsusupport ng yung mga tinatinatinat sinasabi mga NOC NOC B the jobs which is like semi-professional I guess you can think of that, that, that way. Kasi you're all pushing you're thinking about the future you're thinking about immigrating or you know PR yung habol natin normally dito yung next step natin after graduating eh. And although you can still apply for PR by going to the service path most of the time kasi kailangan manager level ka. And of course, hindi naman sila pwede magbigay ng manager level ng ganun-ganun lang for most, most, most of these cases. Lalo na kung express entry yung target mo. Right? So, kind of keep that in mind. So, ang nandito ka is mag-target ka na lang naging maging tactical na yung ano ninyo ng pang-target na rin ng type ng work na kukunin ninyo. If, if, kung if you lock, manage lock out na hindi kayo na, 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 na for some reason or another nakapaano kayo na non-service na work keep it as long as you can because it's very very important kung service kayo honestly yung ano ko ang advice ko ang advice ko is like grit your teeth try to do well and as much as possible like within the years na ano dito kung kaya mo yung mapap- 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 promote magpapromote ka Now, I want to talk about tonight the ways of getting around here in Victoria, as well as all the other locations here in the nearby region like Duncan, Colwood, New Royal, as well as Langford. So tonight, I will be discussing a few things, specifically the type of transportation that one who is living here might be able to avail particularly if one is a student and what type of transportation is open up once you're no longer a student and you have kind of established yourself here particularly once you've gotten your postgraduate work permit after your graduation and are hopefully working full-time so please sit back and relax grab a cup of coffee and we will soon start our discussion Now, once upon a time, in one of my early videos, I think I had discussed the fact that one had to get used to the amount of commuting that you had to do here at Victoria. Now, this is a bit of a change, especially compared to how we had in the Philippines where there was just climb on a jeepney or maybe hail a cab or maybe, you know, just hire a tricycle. And then it was just a matter of being patient enough while your transportation brought you to wherever it was that you wanted to go. And you didn't even have to have a specific drop-off point. You could just like ask the driver to just put you out of the corner and that's it. No problems. Here though, in Canada particularly, in Victoria, you can't do that. Um, while there are taxis, if you're starting out, they're not exactly the number one option. They're pretty expensive. Now, in my experience as a student, your best friend will be the public transportation system. Okay, you're going to have to get used to riding the buses. Now, the bus fleet here in Victoria is handled and managed by the BC Transport System. Now, the city of Victoria and the surrounding areas are crisscrossed by a bunch of bus routes. Now, typically, there are going to be about two or three buses per route. And as far as schedules goes, they're fairly consistent. In my experience, 
five or ten minutes is very very late and very very unusual now compared to the buses back home the buses here that are used by bc transit are cleaner quieter and more comfortable because there is a good chance that you're going to be able to catch a seat on them now i understand that they can get a little crowded during the rush hours but they're never as bad as how things get back home in the philip do take note however that unlike in the philippines buses can only stop at pre-designated bus stops so even if you for example pull the stop uh, stop string and signal the bus driver that you want to get off you are definitely not going to be able to just jump off at the curb oh no you're gonna to have to wait until the bus arrives at the next bus stop and then you can alight for the bus now barring some exceptions there's nowhere in the victoria area that you can't get to by a bus the only issue is time now to give you an example it is very possible for me to hop a bus from where i live here in gordon head and go to where my office is over in glanford avenue the thing is though it's still two bus rides away and i have to make sure that i don't really take too long after getting off the first bus before i transfer over to the next bus otherwise you know i'm gonna get late and not every route is equal so there are some routes that have like short waiting times in between the bus the bus arrivals some of them have like upwards of 20 to 30 minutes so it takes a bit of preparation as well as some planning ahead i guess you could think of it that way uh now the bus rides themselves are not free uh, you can purchase a one-way ticket for about two and a half dollars a day pass for about five dollars and of course you also have a choice of buying a sheaf of tickets it's about 10 tickets for uh, around i don't know how do how much do you go for these days 21 dollars give or take the taxes and these can be purchased at some of the bigger groceries like shoppers drug mart or save on foods there is also the option of getting like a monthly bus pass. Now for adults, it's about $90 per month. For students, it's about 45. That's also the same amount for seniors. Um, kids up to nine, I think, ride free. And then afterwards, they can always just purchase the student card instead. Oh, and depending on where you work, your uh, place of work might also have an option to give you a pro pass. And a pro pass is a sort of ID that counts as a bus card that you can use to swipe um, whenever you ride on a bus. It's normally deducted monthly from your uh, salary. So yeah, if your company has something like that, then that's also a good deal. Of course, as a student, you have other options. If you manage to save some money, then you can probably buy yourself like a bicycle. Um, this is very useful, especially if your school is close by to where you're renting or staying. Um, I know that until like a few years ago, I actually rode my bicycle to um, both like school as well as my, my place of work. So yeah, it also, of course, there's that added bonus of the exercise that you get. Though related to this, another worthwhile option to think about is maybe getting an e-bike. Now it's much more pricier compared to a regular pedal bike. And if you're like me, who's slightly out of shape, that small electric motor that you can, by the way, recharge afterwards once you get home, it can definitely help you especially when you have to go up those really, really steep hills and believe me here in victoria there are a lot of them another option of course you could probably think about is an electric scooter now you can get a wide range of scooters and they can go anywhere between 200 to upwards of 700 and above as far as performance goes 
Uh, but, but yeah, they're also a good way to get around in the city. Though most of the time, you're probably going to have to stick to the sidewalks when you cruise the streets. If you are going to think about saving up to purchase an electric scooter, my advice is to grab something that has a high battery life, something that lasts more than an hour and a half, and also has a good regular speed as well as uphill speed. I would say something that can go more than 25 kilometers per hour on an even plane or 80 kilometers per hour uphill would be a good bet. If you can find something with a seat, that would be great as well. Though, as far as I remember, uh, those go for far more than a thousand Canadian dollars. So it kind of really depends on what you need. Now, the final option is, of course, to get a vehicle of your own. Probably a small sedan, a hatchback, or maybe an SUV. Now, this is only for those who have extra financial leeway as far as spending goes. Now, the type of vehicle that you're going to have to shoot for kind of depends on your situation. If you're just living on your own and you don't have anyone with you, you know, no family or anything like that, it's probably best that you try to get a small sedan or a small car, probably a hatchback. You know, that's probably going to be more than enough to suit your needs. However, if you're like me and you have like a small family along with you, then you might have to think about getting either basically a crossover or a full-size SUV. Now, as for buying the vehicle in question, there are a few places that you can look. Well, the most obvious, of course, would be the marketplace on Facebook, or maybe a visit to one of the countless dealerships that we have here in the Victoria area. Now, as a point of preference, I would take a look at the pre-owned or second-hand cars that are available before I would even think of getting something brand new. But if you think that you are in a good place financially to try and get something brand new, then you know I'm not going to stop you. Just please keep in mind that there are always pros and cons to getting a pre-owned vehicle compared to a brand new vehicle, especially the price. Now, before you decide on what kind of vehicle that you're going to get, you have to, of course, consider your needs. Like, for example, are you the type that goes on long drives so you can't camp out in the wilderness? Or are you more of a city driver and you can just basically need a ride to go to and from the groceries? Now, with all of that in mind, it's time to hit the classifieds. Now, as far as elections go, I look at a few things whenever I'm trying to browse the car. Basically, I take a look at the mileage, the number of owners, the price, of course, and whether or not there are any kind of obvious uh, problems with it, particularly either with the engine or the transmission. Now, believe me, there are a lot of advertisements there selling like SUVs and all sorts of cars on the cheap. But if you look closely, most of these you know vehicles have a lot of problems with them and many have issues that are much more trouble than what the vehicle is actually worth. Now, personally, um, I don't mind, for example, if a car or an SUV is slightly old. The important thing is the engine runs good and the suspension is okay. And if you manage to find a vehicle that also had low mileage for its age, then yeah, I would also give that some consideration. And if the rest of the issues are simply superficial, like scratches on the front view mirror or some dents, then it's something that you can probably live with. Now, to give my own example, uh, our family recently bought a 2004 Kia Sorento, and barring some rust damage on the rear fenders, everything checked out fine. It drived smoothly, the engine was like really, really quiet at times. Now, a an issue eventually did crop up afterwards because we eventually found that the power steering fluid as well as the coolant was leaking. So we had to have a repair done for that. But after that was done, we never had any other issues with it. The SUV is incredibly easy and smooth to drive. And honestly, my family likes it. Now, is it the keeper? Well, I guess for now it is. I understand that it's already getting on in the years, but given the fact that it's a 2004 and yet the mileage is like not even at the 170,000, I mean, it probably still has a lot of life left in it. Oh, but wait, I think I've gotten ahead of myself. Now, I would first want to exhaust my luck with the car owners directly. 
before I would even try with some of the dealerships. Because of course, if you're dealing straight with the car owner, you can probably just pay with the cash or with a cash transfer. If for some reason or another, you decide on getting a vehicle from a dealership, now you have two options on getting a vehicle. Both of them really involve basically a credit check. But you can have it financed by a bank. Now this is kind of like a tricky, tricky proposition, especially if you're not yet permanent resident. If you're like me, you're still on a work permit and stuff like that. Um, the main issue is most banks won't uh, finance older vehicles uh, for non-permanent residents with a small interest rate. Most of the time, they're just going to give you a really, really short time of payment, like within two years. And they're not going to finance anything that's like older than like five years old. Another way, of course, is financing, where instead of paying the bank um, a week uh, by by weekly or monthly sum, you're instead going to pay like the dealership directly. Most dealerships, however, kind of need you to have like a squeaky clean credit rating, and not a lot of people have that, especially for you know people like you and me who are still trying to work on their permanent residence, and you know they're trying to still build up their credit history. So, you know, personal experience tells me that please, please try and exhaust your options as far as dealing with owners directly before you try to consider like going to the dealerships. So I have discussed tonight your options for commuting here in Victoria and the surrounding areas, starting what's normally within reach for a student to someone who's already like working or who has already gotten their postgraduate work permit and probably have like a full-time job and you know other options that you can go from there so yeah thank you for joining me tonight in this discussion if you liked what i've talked about please and leave a like and subscribe you know so whenever i somehow get the new video up and running then you'll know that is posted so again this is Pixel Broadside up in Victoria and I wish you a good day and a good evening. Take care. See you then. Alright, alright, alright. Get around my fellow entrepreneurs and their dream chasers. Because today we are diving into a digital adventure that's about to set our, hopefully, our bank accounts ablaze. Now, please imagine this you, yes, you, transforming your passion, your ideas into an online gold mine. Now, strap in because we're going about. We're going to go on an online journey. It's probably not going to bring us from zero to hero, but it's probably going to be a learning process regardless. And guess what? You don't really need a cape or a fancy degree to make it happen. Now listen up folks, because setting up your own online store on Shopify is like opening the doors to your dream routine. With the rent or the nosy neighbor of course. Now we're talking about an online platform that's more user-friendly than your grandma's TV remote. You see, Shopify isn't just a tool. It's your digital storefront and your 24-7 moneymaker. Now, step one, you're going to have to pick a niche, the treasure trove where your passions and profits collide. Think about what gets your heart racing, what keeps you up at night then convert that into products that your audience can't resist. With Shopify's user-friendly interface, you'll be customizing your store like a maestro orchestrating a symphony. Now, just in case you're wondering what our store is focused on, we are focused on healthcare and beauty products as well as payment products. Most of them are what we call um, evergreen products, meaning that they are not seasonal, and we hope that we can get a good amount of sales from them year long, rather than having like seasonal spikes like, during the holidays. But yeah, you know, let's just try to keep it real here. 
building an online empire isn't gonna happen overnight. So, you know, if you're still rocking down the construction site, you know, don't worry. Rome was not built in a day, and neither will it be your online dominion. What we're really doing is planting the seeds of success, and we, you know, with Shopify's vast array of marketing tools, we're given a digital green thumb ready to make those sales sprout. Now, another thing, of course, that I'd like to discuss is Kindle. Um, in this case, Kindle Direct Publishing. It's a little venture that's kind of bound to unleash your inner Shakespeare. Now, listen, my friends. The world of self-publishing isn't just for seasoned scribes or heavyweight wannabes. It's you've got to be our ticket to literary stardom if you're just starting to flex your word frankly muscles. Now just imagine this, your thoughts, your stories, your wisdom, all immortalized in the digital realm, accessible to readers across the globe. Well, you might not have hit the New York Times bestseller list. Just yet, but every word he publish is like another brick in the palace of your online empire. Now do take note, you don't actually have to publish like a full book. Um, in most cases, you can actually just scrape by publishing what we call low content uh, books, like notebooks, planners, and stuff like that. And indeed, that's what I'm focusing on, though uh, in my case, I'm also trying to branch out into medium content products like activity books and whatnot that target both adults as well as children. Now let's see if that pans out. Um, I haven't really quite gotten a sale yet, but you know, this again, as I mentioned in the disclaimer, this is all a work in progress. Anyway, moving on. Um, next thing that we'd like to kind of discuss is of course, you know, affiliate programs. Now here's where things really get juicy. You see, uh, my savvy comrades, you really don't need to create a product. Sometimes you just need to be the matchmaker. Now have you ever heard of bookbolt.io? Well, in this case, it's like the keep it bright tools. And you are the charming host, in this case. Now if you promote products you believe in, you're tapping into a river of commissions flowing straight into your pocket. Now, if you're just like me with an interest in books, as I mentioned, we can start with bookbook.io. It's a happy tool, basically. Mostly, I use it for research, but it also can be used to make books themselves. You can set up a co uh, cover, uh, the contents, and you know, set up the size, more or less, to Kindle Direct Publishing's uh, expected standards and. You know, most of the time you're going to be able to upload something that can actually appear on the Amazon storefront. Um, if you're interested in trying it out, I can hit you up with a discount code so you can test it out. So, details will be in this video's description, of course. And you know what? Uh, another program that I have applied with is Amazon's online affiliate program. Now. Of course, Amazon is like a digital bazaar. You can hawk products without lifting a finger. Now, you can imagine content guiding your shoppers to the best deal, and with a simple click, you're gonna earn a commission. A bit, it's a small commission, but you know, these things kind of add up over time. So, if you're able to guide someone to a product that they're interested in, 2% is gonna be a big deal. Now, uh, all of this is all a work in progress. Again, let's address the elephant in the room. You know, we haven't really hit it big, or the who haven't hit it big syndrome. We, you're not alone. Now, every empire has its humble beginnings. It's all about testing the waters, fine tuning your sales strategies, and learning from every move. It's your journey, and of course, again, this is like my journey as well. Our narrative, and you know, guess what? We're all the authors and the protagonists of these stories. So here's the deal: your online store is like your personal program, a photo program, playground of possibilities. Kindle Direct Publishing is your literary canvas, 
and affiliate programs are your virtual gold mines. Let's start to channel all of that and your inner interpreter and start carving out your name in the digital hall of fame, if I say so myself. Now as we wrap this up, please remember, it's not about hitting the jackpot overnight. It's about consistency, determination, and a dash of that entrepreneurial fire. Your story is unfolding chapter by chapter, sail by sail. So go on my friends, unleash your creativity, embrace the unknown, and make your online dreams a reality. The journey's thrilling and the rewards, well, they're as boundless as your imagination. Just a little update. Uh, <laughs> the last recordings. Well, since then things haven't quite turned out as much or as well as I planned. Now, uh, the affiliate marketing thing really didn't really pan out, especially with uh, Amazon and stuff like that. But yeah, so even in Shopify, well, kind of didn't really work out expected. I mean, we got like the products for sure, but you need marketing. And at that point in time, we didn't really have, have the extra funds for it. So instead of, actu of us actually earning anything, it kind of like put us deeper and deeper in that. So my advice here to the people who are going to try uh, basically online marketing as a sideline, yeah, you better have a plan because it is not easy. You're going to have to sink up a lot of your time and money into marketing, and it's not cheap. Uh, you have to imagine, like, I actually had to mm, increase my credit limit just to be able to, like, pay for the marketing, and it didn't even work out. We weren't able to even make back a lot of the money that we put in. So, fair warning. I mean, there's also, like, a bit of luck, uh, luck involved. And I guess in that by that regard, we really, we weren't really lucky. So in the end, I had to more or less like shutter the Shopify uh, store. I mean, it's still there; it's just inactive. And basically, move on to more tangible things. So I had to like go back into. I had to focus really on my work. Um, well, and the other things like. Since then, I've also kind of, kind of gotten back into food service, for example. I mean, that is something tangible. That is something physical. It's 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 hard work for sure. Yeah, sure. But in the end of the day, it's more stable money. I mean, yes, sure. These are twelve-hour days, um, or you know, ten and a half hours if you ignore like the lunch time and the breaks. But you are earning good money, and you know. If you're permanent, then that will help in a ways to get you get one foot in the door, more or less, to get into PR. I'm I'm not saying though that it's wrong to try to make a business online, but you know, you better know what you're getting into. Again, anyway, uh, these are the recordings that I had. Again, thank you for sticking through these with me. Again, this is Pixel Bro Side. Happy New Year, Toy, and I hope that the selection that I have presented. Will help it's a bit rambling of course again these are like stuff that we recorded on and off over the course of the year but i hope it will help you and hope it will really be interesting so yeah hopefully you come back and next time then i mean i hope to have something interesting so good night and take care <laughs>